1 Corinthians 9, verse 19 says, Though I am free and belong to no man, I make myself a slave to everyone to win as many as possible. To the Jews, I became like a Jew to win the Jews. To those under the law, I became like the one under the law. Though I myself am not under the law, so as to win those under the law. To those not having the law, I became like one not having the law. Though I am not free from God's law, but am under Christ's law. So as to win those not having the law. <coughs> to the weak I became weak. To win the weak. I have become all things to all men, so that by all possible means I might save some. I do all this for the sake of the gospel, that I may share in his blessings. Verse 24. Do you not know that in the race all the runners run, but only one gets the prize? Run in such a way as to get the prize. Everyone who competes in the games goes into strict training. They do it to get a crown that will not last. But we do it to get a crown that will last forever. Therefore, I do not run like a man running aimlessly. I do not fight like a man beating the air. No, I beat my body and make it my slave so that after I have preached to others, I myself will not be disqualified for the price. Now I'd like to uh, invite Reverend Lee for today's sermon, which is entitled, On the Way to Spiritual Glory. Very good morning to you all. This morning I would like to preach from 1 Corinthians chapter 19, uh, chapter 9, verse 19 to 27. From this passage, I'm going to talk about how if you want to grow spiritually, you must grow beyond your current self as seed yourself. A person who does not or cannot exceed oneself is one that is not growing. If a person does not grow for a long period of time, they will be troubled. A person must break through or strive to grow beyond the limitation of self. The PowerPoint is on the way, as the Shelly is uh, getting my uh, list. All right. So, what I have just mentioned, a person must break through or strive to grow beyond the limitation of self. For example, a person's limitation may be that he is lazy, not willing to work hard and therefore, no achievements in life. That's his or her limitation. What he or she needs to have a breakthrough is his laziness. He or she needs to grow beyond his current self. But what is this self? What is this self? Self is not just the existence of a person, but what exists within the person. It's something that within that person. The existence of a person that cannot be seen, and yet is obviously there. Something there, but cannot be seen. Let, let me give you and very, uh, a very simple example. During counseling session, a lot of time I see person start to cry. What is the meaning of that cry? I can see what you can't see of that this person. It is the emotion side. 
it won't show to all, but only in that very particular moment. He cried. As a man, a businessman, a manager in the, in the company, cried. So it is the inner self of the person. If your inner self is not healthy, then you are not a healthy person because you are spiritually unhealthy. <coughs> then you are not a healthy person. If your inner self is healthy, then you can be healthy in spiritual sense. Of course, there are times when physical health affects the inner health. So what is focus of self here? What is the focus of self here? This is the definition I give to what self is. Self is assistance of oneself that is made up, uh, met, made up of feelings, thinking, and behavior that has been formed over the years. Over the years of growing, a person does not just grow up in physiological sense. Over the years, a person learn from family, relatives, school, friends, from society and culture. He has learned a certain emotion expression, certain way of thinking, and also certain way of behaving, a, beha a certain way of behavior. Therefore, a person who has good spiritual health will be healthy in thinking, in behavior, in words, in management of emotions. So when we talk about the inner health of a person, we find that we will come across like issues related to self-image. Self-image that is too low or too high can be harmful to a person's life. A person with a self-image that is too high will plan projects or will set goals that he can never exceed because he does not realize that they are beyond his capabilities. They live in idealism. A person with a self-image that is too low will not be willing to step out and do things. They normally feel that they cannot. They are not as good as, as others. They will probably want to hide their achievements because they feel embarrassed to share. This kind of psychological analysis, high self-esteem, low self-esteem, self-esteem were very neutral. This kind of analysis helps us to see that the inner self of a person can affect him deeply. A person's self-image is formed over the years from family, school, and environment, and they don't necessarily build you up to be a healthy person. Remember, family, school, environment, and environment, all this influence your self-image and don't necessarily build you up to be a healthy person. We will look at it from biblical point of view later. So, what is so what is 
grow beyond your current self or exceed oneself. It is to replace the old self with its emotion, thoughts, and behavior by a new self with emotion, thoughts, and behavior that is better. The Bible calls it new creation in Christ. New creation in Christ. So to grow beyond your current self is to find the self in Christ, one that is healthy, one that is resurrected in Christ. It is living with emotions, thinking, and behavior that is resurrected to Christ, guided by the Holy Spirit. When does a person turn from pain to joy? When does a person turn from pain to joy? It is when he changes his way of thinking, which will then lead to a change in emotions. That is the person why when a person loses hope, and that is the reason why when a person loses hope in the future, we try to comfort him, help him to see things in positive way. What do you mean by positive way? Positive way means new thinking, new way of looking at it, new thinking to that particular event. So there is the reason why we comfort people. We encourage them to have faith in God. How can a person change his way of thinking? Since our thinking will build up when we were starting from young until today. So how can a person change his way of thinking? It is to shift focus to the one who is perfect. To follow the example of the most healthy person who has ever lived in this world, that is Jesus. He is the resurrected Savior. He can give you new life. He can renew a life that is sad, hurting, or even dying inside. He can replace the old with the new. The old way of relating to things or people around you that makes you sad. The old way of thinking that is negative. The old way of behavior that hurt others and God. All these are to be replaced by the new life in Jesus Christ. With, king, with kingdom perspective and behavior. That is how you can grow beyond your current self and exceed yourself. Paul is a great example for us. Great example for someone whose life exceeds himself. There was a great change from his own life. From fervently teaching Judaism to passionately spreading the gospel of Lord Jesus Christ. This is his emotion. His heart was all for Judaism, defending Judaism. After Jesus came into his life, his own life was re replaced by the life of Jesus. Therefore he says, I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. This is how the new life in Christ has replaced the old. The old that did not believe Jesus is the Son of God who could save sinners. It was a great change in thinking. In Paul. From seeing Christianity as cult to acknowledging Jesus as Lord. 
as he changed in his thinking, his behavior then start to change. From persecuting Christians, Paul became an apostle to preach the gospel. Paul became an apostle who was persecuted for the name of Jesus. This is an example of how a life is, a life is changed in Jesus. Now let's uh, take a look at the different characteristics between the old self before Christ and new self in Christ according to what Paul has written here in this passage. This new self in Christ is the one that has exceeded the old self. One that has the will, be, uh, one that has and will continue to grow your current self as your life is constantly transformed by Jesus, by the Word of God. Paul says here in verse 19, Though I am free and belong to no man, I make myself a slave to everyone, to win as many as possible. Paul has moved from free and belonging to no man to being a slave to all. The old self likes to be free, to be self-serving, to do whatever is the desires. The old self does not like to be restricted. That's what the world says. Be yourself. Don't do the things that you don't want to do. Always be happy. Be yourself. But in saying that, the world never talks about consequences. For example, if you have a fish in the fish bowl, and it says to you, I want, I want freedom. What? He said, I want freedom. I want to do as I like. I want to be like you, walking around. Get me out of this fishbowl. And then it jumps out of the fishbowl and landed on the floor. Okay, it's got its freedom. What happened to the fish? It dies. So to say, to say that I want to be myself also means let me do what I want. Don't bother me. Sometimes can be very dangerous. But instead, Paul says, here he becomes slaves to everyone. He used to be self-serving, but now his life is changed. His life became a life that serves others. Verse 20, to the Jews I became like a Jew. His desire is to save the Jews. Verse 21, to those who not having the law, I become like one not having the law. It means to understand their situation so that he can win this group of people. In verse 22, to the weak I became weak, to win the weak. I have become all things to all men. What does he mean by that? It means that Paul used to live according to his own desires and to serve oneself. But now, his life in Christ has a seed, his old, uh, whole old self, old life. This, this life is not affected by others, whether those under law or not rich or poor. He was able to stand firm in his faith while he made friends with these people, care for them and share the gospel with them. This is a powerful life. 
In verse 25 says, everyone who competes in the games goes into uh, a strict training. They do it to get a crown that will not last. This is a life that is not growing in Christ. It will only pursue things that will not last. This is in contrast with Paul's life in Christ. He spread the gospel to get a crown that will last forever. This is the difference between the old self and the new self that has grown beyond it. There is a change in a person who has trusted life in Jesus. He has different insight to life. The old self has been trading what is worldly, what is temporary with life, giving up time, strength, emotions, performance in returns for more financial, uh, physical things, uh, uh, more money, more status, etc. But Jesus says in Matthew chapter 16, 26, what good will be for a man if he gains the whole world and forfeit his soul? New life in Christ will see beyond what is temporal and pursue what is eternal. That is what we see in Paul's life. Once Christ is in his life, there is a great transformation in his value system. Value system transformed by Christ. He let go of his authority, his status. He do not even see all the knowledge that he had gained as important. He used one word to describe himself. No longer doctor of philosophy, but servant of Jesus Christ. Servant is the word that he used to describe his, his new life. Why does he mean by that? It, it means that instead of earthly rewards, rewards that is temporary, he now pursued a heavenly crown that is everlasting. He put all his life in evangelism to receive the heavenly crown. So my dear brothers and sisters, how do you spend your time? Are you pursuing what is eternal? You can be a witness for Christ in your daily living. Be ready to share about God, share the gospel to others. Give them a gospel tract. Tell them the four spiritual law, or perhaps the bridge of life. Preach the gospel to your friends. You can be a witness for Christ in your daily living. Spend time with those who need comfort. We will not be able to see the needs of others when we are busy pursuing earthly things. Don't bother me, I'm so busy. Don't call me. I have no time for you. But as we begin to pursue that which is eternal, we will begin to see the needs around us. To grow beyond our current self, we need to look beyond our own needs and care for people around us. Care for people in need. But we, we can't do that if we are simply busy with life. It is easy to neglect what is important when we are busy with life. When is it most likely for husband and wife to fight? When they are busy with work, no time to communicate. Work that promises a better pay, a better life, destroy the life that you want. 
we certainly will not have time to uh, uh, will not have time for things that matter in the in eternal kingdom of God when we keep pursuing the better things in life. For example, a couple who works full time can afford to take a long mortgage of five hundred thousand. Between of, between the two of them. They managed to save the capital of 150,000. So add up will be 650,000. So they can afford to buy a house within 650,000. But if they decide to buy a house that is more than one million, and in your plan, they will have children in a couple years of time. What will happen to them? They have to start trying to find another job, second job. They have to get overtime pay. Let me ask you, can they effectively, effectively be servant of God or slave of the world? A lot of people are trapped by the cravings of sinful man's desires. The lust of their eyes. They cannot grow beyond their current self. They cannot leave out the new life in Christ. The more people crave for the expensive things in life, the more he has to work hard for it. And there will be less time for family, less time for God, less time for what is truly important in life. This is belongs to the old self. But the focus of a new self in Christ will be on what is eternal, the spiritual needs of man. Besides, Saving lost souls, it also includes the spiritual needs of family, of those who are close to you. Spend quality time with them. What is the quality time with your partner? Can you remember? With your family? We must leave out this life in Christ in order to grow out of the old self, replaced by the new, new life in Christ. The old self indulge in desires without self-control. Unless we are under the Lordship of Jesus Christ, unless we surrender ourselves to the leading of the Holy Spirit, we can be out of control. Anything out of control can be very dangerous, including our life. We can be like the goldfish that jump out of the ball. But a life in Christ is under the guidance of the Holy Spirit. So that's why Paul says, I beat my body and make it my slave. That is, taking control of one's own desire. Now, how can you grow out of your current self, your old self? We have said that we can live a renewed and resurrected life in Christ. A new life replacing the old one. First, in order for us to grow Spiritually, first, trust in Jesus as personal Savior. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. You have to trust in Jesus. He will replace your old self, your weakness, 
with a new life. A new life that is in Him. That abides in Him. Secondly, obey God's, uh, obey God's truth and be free. To the Jews who had believed Him, Jesus said, If you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth. And the truth will set you free. John chapter 8, verse 31 to 32. The world says, Do not believe in Jesus, for you will lose your freedom. There are many things that you can't do once you become a Christian. Contrary to what the world says, when you truly know the truth, the truth sets you free. Freedom without truth leads you to destruction. But true freedom builds you like a uh, True freedom builds your life up. When you have the word of God, when you have the truth of God, you will stay away from sins. You are less likely to be in bondage. Say, if you sin and violate the law, you will be, you will be caught or maybe imprisoned. That is bondage. Or perhaps your sin is very small. It makes you unhappy. That is also kind of bondage. The more truth of God in your life, you are less likely to be in bondage. You will then experience freedom in God's truth. Thirdly, in order for us to grow spiritually, to pursue holy living, those who belong to Christ, Jesus, have crucified the sinful nature with its passions and desires. Galatians chapter 5, verse 24. Self is made of emotion, thoughts, and behavior. New life in Christ is built up in the truth of God with new way of thinking, new emotions, and of course, new behaviors. From loving the world to loving the soul, uh, the soul of man, this new life in Christ leads you to experience freedom without bondage of sin, one that brings glory to God. Therefore, you must pursue a holy life. Let's not be satisfied with just being a Christian. We must set our target, our goal, <coughs> to pursue a holy life. There are many temptations in this world today. And you will face many tem temptations out there. Last year, when I went back to my hometown, when my father was sick, one day I had a, had a chance to just sit and chat with my older brother. This brother of mine has been involved in buying land, building, and selling property. That's his business. He is now at a retiring stage, and he is very happy with what he had achieved in his life. He says, I had purchased, purchased all the land according to proper process. Oh, do you have to mention that? Don't you purchase, purchase land in proper process? 
If you are from Malaysia, you will know. If I had not purchased land according to proper process, meaning using bribery, I could have purchased more land and perhaps earn more money because because more land can build more houses and sell more houses. Because if I do that, there would have been more opportunities. But then he said, so what if I earn more money? So what? I thank God that I have been able to sell the shops and houses that I have built sooner than others and with a better price because they know that I do not cut corners. From him, it is more important to live out a life that is pleasing to God, a life that is holy. A few months ago, I just knew from him. He was invited by the second highest position of uh, already of Malaysia to invite him to join in a business group and do building for government. And my brother rejected it because he knows what is inside. For him, it is more important to live out a life that is pleasing to God, a life that is holy. My brothers and sisters, we must pursue to live a holy life. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have, have crucified the sinful nature with its passions and desires. Passions and desires lead us to want more of the things of this world. It even leads to doing, to, to doing things that are not right. But Paul says, those who belong to Christ has crucified the sinful nature. All these passions and desires on the cross so that they will not be easily tempted by the things of the world. So many temptations out there. We must pursue a holy living. Lastly, we must imitate Christ. Galatians chapter 2 verse 20 said, I have been crucified with Christ and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. To grow beyond our current self, old self, we must continuously imitate Christ. Jesus prays, so we pray. Jesus, uh, Jesus share the word of God. We must study and share the word of God. Jesus cares for those who are weak. We must care for them as well. Jesus had put God as his focus in ministry. We must put God first in our service. Jesus always think of kingdom matter. We must think of matters regarding the kingdom of God, regarding the church. It is no longer I that live, but Christ in me. Everything in your body, your old self, says to ignore the request sometimes. Take for example, you have worked for more than 10 hours and finally it gets home and it's now time for you to relax in the bathtub. As you are just getting ready, phone rang. And a friend called you on the phone, asking for help. Please come. 
He says, it's urgent. Everything in you say, you don't have to go. You are so tired now. You must, you, 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 you must have a good time at home. Have a nice bath and a nice coffee. Nice coffee. Your old self, your whole body says to ignore the request. Now it's time for you to rest. That's the old self. But what is the new life in Christ that is imitating Christ? You will say to yourself, if someone who belongs to Jesus can't help him, who can help him? If Christ is here, he will not refuse. So I will forego my desire to care for my brother. The next hour of the next hour of listening and showing empathy is indeed harder than the previous ten hours of work. Sometimes being a listener is not an easy task. It is even without pain. But if you do what Christ will do, you will receive strength from Him. You will experience His power. You will grow spiritually because you have experienced God in your life. How God has blessed your friend through you. You will experience God in your life when you are willing to do as Jesus does. So, in your daily living, imitate Christ. This is the life that we want to pursue, to imitate Jesus, to live as Jesus would. That is how we can grow beyond our current self and live in a full and abundant life in Christ. Let us pray. Dear Lord Jesus, we want to thank you because you have set an example for us that we can imitate you. So Lord, we trust in you as our personal Savior. We obey your truth, set free from the sinful bondage, And we pray that the Holy Spirit will help us to pursue holy living. Resist all the temptation from this world and leave out the new life. Leave the new life that glorifies you, edifying people. Lord, we give you thanks. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.